Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bethel this morning. Let's stand and sing together. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Welcome here and online. Um, we're so excited to worship with you this morning. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, this starts our collection for the retired uh, ministers or missionaries and ministers offering that we do every year. Um, I know we had sent out a letter earlier because of uh, the pandemic and everything. We missed a few of the collections for our other traditional offerings, but uh, we want to make sure that we honor and um, bless our retired uh, missionaries and ministers. So. Um, you can uh, designate your offering here in the sanctuary, or if you're giving online, you can do that through um, by mailing in a check or the other ways that we do that off our offerings, and then just designate it or contact the church to make sure we know that it's going to the RMMO. Um, we also, you know, as we're as it is the uh, the pandemic and we're trying to be together but apart and together at home and socially distanced and all that, we don't want to lose the spirit of Christmas and the Christmas message that um, we have through our fellowship together here as a body of uh, the Church of Bethel. Um, so. We want to we want to get some messages together. We want to hear from you. Um, you can record a message, simple with your phone, just a Christmas greeting to everyone. Um, you can come to the church and do it if you want to have a pretty background um, by the tree or anywhere in the building. Um, or we will come to you. Contact us. Let us know that. Um, you'd like to record a message and we can come, we can record it from your driveway and stay six feet apart with masks on and all that stuff. Um, or, you know, we can work out, but we want to get a bunch of messages together. And then I think they're going to compile a lovely little video for us to share. So we can just have a little bit of that Christmas spirit that we can't quite do the same way this year. So 
please uh, get involved with that and send your videos in and uh, get those in so we can put that together. And with that, I believe it's time for um, our first lighting of the Advent candle. The scripture that goes with our candle today is Matthew 2.10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. This candle represents joy. For God does not promise us happiness, but something more lasting. Joy, something given to those who choose his son. A deep satisfaction and purpose beyond happiness that cannot be taken away. Joy comes with relationship in worshiping Christ as the shepherds did that day so long ago. Lord God, we, we, are, uh, we have so many, so many thoughts and emotions and feelings as we enter this, this particular Advent season, Lord. And it's, it's different and it's, it's unlike any other and it's scary, but in the midst of all that, Lord, we are joyful because we know that in just a few short weeks, Lord, we get to rejoice and celebrate your birth, the birth of your son and Christ coming down to earth to save us. And Lord, there is nothing but joy when we think of that. And so we are so grateful and we ask that you keep us, keep our hearts light, you keep us happy and you keep our, us mindful of what the gift that your son has brought to us. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Please stand. Our scripture this morning is 1 Peter verses five, six, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. we thank you for this day lord we thank you for the sun outside lord we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us we thank you for our church lord i pray that we would um 
that you would speak to us during this service, Lord, through the music that we're singing, Lord, all through the week. And, um, Lord, that we would understand the gift that you have given us, Lord, that you gave to us, Father. We are so very grateful. And we ask that you bless this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please be seated. As we move into our offertory time, just a reminder for those of you in the sanctuary that you may uh, drop your offering in the little plates at the, at the door. And for anyone watching at home, you can mail in a check, donate through your bank, or donate through our website. you are 
Welcome, everybody. Wonderful to see your faces here this morning. How can we pray for one another? Uh, pray for my mama. Uh-huh. Up and down with the breath. Pray for Jeannie. Her breath is uh, going in and out. I mean, that's what it's supposed to do, but... <clears throat> um, you're just saying that she's, it's, it's, she's finding a little difficulty to breathe? Okay. All right. We'll pray for Jeannie. Yes. Uh, can you say pray for my dad, Terry? Your dad, Terry. Yep. He's getting propped up and the chemo is hurting his breath next week. Okay. All right. Yes. My grandfather on my dad's side, his name is George. He has COVID right now. He is in, he's living in Florida, currently in the hospital. So he's praying. Hannah's grandfather, George, has COVID and needs prayer. A lot of people, we, we've had a couple of people get some COVID scares. I think we have our... Um, couple, is it Sydney that has COVID? Yeah. Is that right? I think she's but she's recovered or recovering? Yeah, so, I think she's recovering. so we st- but she still needs prayer. Yes, Bob. Are there any updates on your Uncle Roger? Uh, my Uncle Roger, no updates. He is still in the same place. Some of you may have heard we put out on the prayer request. My Uncle Roger um, was undergoing surgery uh, for, for cancer, and there was a complication with the anesthetic. So his... Uh, Part of his brain is gone right now. They don't know if it's going to come back or not. <clears throat> so we're, we're waiting to see on that. No updates. It's, everything is the same. Uh, if things improved, my family would tell me. If things went downhill, they would say nothing. So it's just, just how it works. So uh, no news. I'm not sure what no news means in my family. So <laughs> it's just what we expect. But right now, nothing's changed. Thank, thank you for asking. How else can we pray? If you are watching online, we're asking you to put uh, your prayer requests there. And if this is the first time you're seeing, we ask you to put your name there so we can pray for you. And uh, we, we, put, we put out a prayer list every Monday. We want to make sure we have it in there. You can still email to uh, Dennis Trezona, and he'll make it sure it gets onto the e- email list or to Bethel's office at yahoo.com. It'll get on the prayer request will get there. Would you join me as we pray? Lord, we are so grateful for all the things that you have given us in this season. I'm so grateful for the thanksgivings that we have had, for uh, the food that we have eaten, for the family that we have been able to get together with. I know people have been getting together in small groups, and we just pray you bless those groups, that you keep us free from COVID. We pray that you work in those who need your healing power. You work in those families that need healing from mourning, who are going through difficulties at this time of year, celebrating holidays. We pray, Lord, that you just lift us up, that you guide us in how we should go, that you teach us how to learn to love each other better, and come to you and come to your word as we seek comfort, enlightenment, and joy at this season. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. We are going to combine the last verses of 1 Peter with our Advent season. As Peter gives us advice on how to live, we're going to see that Jesus lived this out before uh, Peter even gave us this advice. Uh, the first bit of advice comes from these verses, 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him, Because he cares for you. Sound familiar? Peter has been talking about being holy and he's talking about being humble. Peter talks about those things over and over again. And when we hear something over and over again, what does it mean? It's important. Say that with me. It's important. Being humble is important. I mean, we know the downfall of Satan comes from uh, scriptures in Ezekiel because of his pride. He thought he could be God. And whenever we put ourselves forward, that's where we're putting. We're putting ourselves in place of God instead of allowing God to rule and be over us. Now, when Jesus was born, king of kings, the king of kings was born. He was not surrounded by guards or armies or servants. When the king of kings was born, he wasn't born in a plush palatial mansion in a bed surrounded by doctors. When the king of kings was born, he was born in a manger. 
in a small suburb outside of Bethlehem, a country in a country of no significance. I mean, it was so insignificant, the Romans didn't bother to conquer it for a very long time because they couldn't see any worth in it. Well, you know, why bother? When Jesus was born, the king of kings, born in a manger, he was surrounded by a father and a mother and some animals. He was small. There was nothing particularly outstanding about him. He wasn't particularly strong or particularly beautiful. It's true, after some time, the wise men came and brought him some gifts. But those gifts were sold and used so the family could hide in Egypt when they were fleeing the wrath of Herod, if you remember that. It's true that a chorus of angels sang at Jesus' birth. But the ones who heard it were just shepherds. Advent. Advent is the time we celebrate when God came to live with us. The time came when God walked on earth as one of us. Most of us don't really understand what that means. For God to come down and live as one of us. This is humility. When Peter tells us to be humble, he has the perfect example in Jesus. Jesus, the king of kings, and yet did not command an army. Instead, he walked the earth. Jesus, the king of kings, not living in a palace. Instead, it says that the son of man had nowhere to put his head. No house, no blanket, no place. The king of kings did not walk as a king. He lived as the poorest among us lived. Peter calls this a kind of humility. To live life like our Savior lived. He calls us to live this kind of life. I've been poor at times in my life. I've, I've had times when I haven't known where my next meal is come, going to come from. I've been hungry and gone without food for some time. With great, great poverty, sometimes comes great worry. Amen? When we're poor, sometimes we get worried. Peter tells us to connect our humility with a worry-free life. And that's very difficult for some of us. When you don't have a car, you don't have to worry about where you're going to park. But then you don't have a, you know, a means of getting from one place to another, especially here in Detroit. But it's more than thinking about what blessings you have by not having these things. Jesus lived each day expecting God to provide everything for him. I remember in the 60s. Remember... They warned us that there was going to be this population explosion from the baby boomers and we would all run out of food. I'm not sure how many of you remember this. They said we were all going to run out of food in the 60s. And they repeated that whole thing. Overpopulation. We're all going to run out of food in the 70s. And they repeated it again in the 80s and in the 90s. Every time the population of the earth has exploded and gone up, somehow or other, there's been enough food for everybody. I think that's God's providence. We don't see a way that we're going to feed all these people. But somehow or other, there's a revolution, there's a change, there's a thing and happens, and we do have enough food. We grow enough food so there should be no hungry people on earth ever. We grow enough food to feed the whole world. And yet, there are hungry people. It's not that we don't have the food. We do have the food. God has provided for us. He has given us the means we just don't share with one another. We have the food. We have worries. We have anxieties. It's hard to live without worries and anxieties, especially when you find yourself hungry or sick or lonely or cold. How can we live a worry-free life? I don't know if you notice, know this, but when you read Scripture and you read it carefully, you can see that Peter worried. Peter worried. He gave some of his problems to Jesus, but he kept some of those problems for himself that he was going to take care of. He didn't want Jesus to take care of everything. I'm going to take care of some of those things. When you keep a little problem to yourself, it often grows into a bigger problem. Peter worried about catching fish. Peter worried about the temple tax. Peter worried when he was walking on the water. He worried. 
He worried when Jesus was arrested. He was so worried when Jesus was arrested that he drew his sword and struck the ear off of one of the guards. Think about this. If Jesus hadn't stepped in and done something in that moment, Peter would have been arrested with Jesus and executed with Jesus. Where would the church have been then without Peter? But Jesus did step in. We remember that he cuts off the our, our ear of the guard. This is mostly because Peter was a fisherman and not a soldier. Peter's aim was to kill the guard and the best he could do was cut off his ear. Not a great soldier. But Peter did this all because he was worried. We are to be humble and worry free. Peter knew how worry could ruin his life because it had ruined his life. After this moment, when he stood up to the guards, when he went back and saw Jesus was arrested, when he went back and saw Jesus was beaten, Peter worried so much that someone would connect him with Jesus and that he would then be arrested and he would then be killed. He denied Jesus three times. That's how much worry Peter had. He was worried, Peter, he was worried about everything. And so Peter understood that worry can almost destroy your life. It can destroy your life. It almost destroyed his. Jesus did not worry. Peter, after the resurrection, he was a different person. He found a way to put his worry aside so that he didn't worry. And so there was a time in Acts chapter 12 when Peter is arrested and he's put in prison and he doesn't worry. When Peter is chained up, Peter doesn't worry. When Peter is sentenced to be executed in prison, and he doesn't worry. And then an angel appears to him. Still, Peter doesn't worry. Peter doesn't worry because Jesus had shown him a different way. In every situation he comes in, he doesn't have to worry because he knows Jesus is going to be with him. When Jesus walked the earth, when he was with him as a disciple, Peter worried because he was putting his faith into something other than Jesus. He was putting his faith in the kingdom he imagined Jesus would establish. That he would sit at Jesus' right hand. That Jesus would rule. That there would be a rebirth of Israel. And the whole world would come to them. This is what he pictured. I'm going to sit at Jesus' right hand. That's where he put all of his faith. Not in Jesus. But after the resurrection... Peter understands that the kingdom is a whole different, different thing. He puts his faith in Jesus instead of the things that happen in this earthly kingdom. He doesn't put his faith in the sword. Because when Jesus leads the revolution, it's not going to be led by a sword. It's going to be led by a lamb. Or you could put it this way. The only sword a Christian carries is the word of God. Amen? That's the only place where we put our faith. That's where we put our strength. Jesus, Peter took out a sword when Jesus was arrested because his faith was in an earthly kingdom. We don't take that sword up. We die by that sword. Why such a change? Let me frame Peter's life in a slightly different way. When Peter was worried about catching fish, Jesus pointed to where the fish were. When Peter worried about the temple tax, Jesus pointed to where the money could be found, which incidentally was inside of a fish. When he worried about walking on water, Jesus pulled Peter to his feet. When Peter cut off the guard's ear, Jesus healed the guard so that Peter would remain free. So when Peter was arrested, he didn't worry. Executed or not, he knew Jesus would be with him. That Jesus would find him. That Jesus would lift him up. That Jesus would provide for his needs. Jesus is Emmanuel. God with us. And when he's walking with us, we have no need to worry about anything. Isaiah 41.10 Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We do not 
need to fear because when we need it, God will give us courage. James 1, 5. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously, without reproach, and it will be given to him. We do not need to fear because when we need it, God will give us wisdom. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We do not need to fear because when we need it, God will give us strength. Psalm 37.5, commit, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. We do not need to fear because when we need it, God will give us faith. Wiersbe says this, he says, or something like this, he says, give your burdens to God, but it is important to remember God must work in us as well as for us. You know, it's easy to offer up a prayer to God and have God work for us. Lord, I want you to do this. And if God does that, praise God, God's listening to me. But we need to make sure that God isn't at our command. He's not doing things because we want it or because we think that we might like it. God has to work inside of us too. He changes us from the inside out so that we might more resemble Christ. And we have to put that part of our lives into God's hand and have faith. And when we trust him to work in us as well as for us, our lives can change and we can have that joy and we can cast our worries on him. Only in that way can we cast our burden on the Lord and he will sustain us. Psalm 55, 22. So did Jesus help Peter when he was a disciple? Yes, when Peter was a disciple walking this earth, following his own way, hoping God would work for him, Jesus was there for him. But Jesus worked stronger in him when Peter says, Lord, don't work just for me, work in me. Change my heart, change my life. And in that way, he could truly cast his anxieties on the Lord and have no fear. What fears are you holding on to? Do you know Emmanuel has come? Do you know the King of Kings is here? Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep. And did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. In this season of Advent, we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And because God is with us, we don't need to have fears and worries of a normal life. Because he will direct us where we need to go. Are you willing to cast all your anxieties on the Lord? To live a life free of fear? So many people in this time keep their fears close to them. God has given you gifts in your life. Celebrate them in this season. Let the worries of tomorrow wait till tomorrow. Because for now, Jesus is with us. Emmanuel. As we close our service, you may have anxiety in your life. You may have difficulties that you're suffering with. They may include loneliness and cold and hunger and a place to live and bills. There's so much it seems to worry about in this world. 
But when we follow Jesus, we know that no matter what happens, if he is with us, he will overcome our problems. He will put us in the place that we need to be so that we might reach others. In this time, we are to look towards our blessings, towards the blessing of family, towards the blessing of the gifts that God has given us to use for his kingdom, and the gifts that he's just given us just for fun. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we close our service and put our worries and anxieties upon him. Lord, I thank you that you are the God who is with us, that you work inside of us to change us as well as for us. I pray, Lord, that you give us an opportunity to share your love, share your grace, but more than that, Lord, help us to give up our fears, our anxieties, our difficulties. Lord, we are surrounded by people in the media that's saying there is so much to be afraid of and there are so many things to worry about, but we know in your hands we will be taken care of, that we will be in the place we need to be, that we will have the things that we need to overcome and that you will be with us no matter what our circumstances are. I pray, Lord, you continue to work through us and in us Give us an opportunity, O oh Lord, to be changed by you, to have your spirit come inside of us, to give up all that worries us so that we might have the joy-filled life that you want us to have. I pray, Lord, you don't give up on us. I pray, Lord, you continue to work through us pray, Lord, you give us an opportunity to share the miracle of Emmanuel with people who need to hear it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Please stand. may the God who loves us so much he sent his son to be one of us who loves us so much he sent his son to die for us who shows his love not just through Jesus's death but through his resurrection give you an opportunity to celebrate the advent the time when Jesus came and walked among us as one of us and give us an opportunity to share that and to share our love of you with them we pray all of these things in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.